Hello lovely people out there, as part of row 1's aim, our aim is to make sure that you pass this crock 1 very successfully and uh, by popular request, one way that we can help is to help you to understand and uh, get the clues that you will need in solving the crock 1 questions. So without wasting much time, I'll just zoom in into the questions. And uh, as you see the question, if you have any uh, question to an explanation, feel free to, to contact us and uh, we'll be more than glad to, to help. This is Croc 1, 2016, that's last year. And I want us to go through it one after the other, one after the other. So let's begin. A 35-year-old man has been delivered into a surgical ward with a suppurating wound. Suppurating wound. This is just a wound that discharges pulse. And then the pulse is just uh, a yellow greenish opaque liquid. Opaque liquid. So this suppurating wound is produced in the neck anterior to the trachea take note of this this is a clue that you also have to take note the previsceral space and this previsceral visceral space is simply the space that is surrounding the trachea and lying against the anterior wall of the esophagus now below it it continues into the anterior portion of the superior mediastinum below it continues into the anterior portion of the superior mediastinum and i will explain to you what mediastinum is in a moment but let's continue the question now if a surgical operation is not performed urgently there is a risk of infection spreading to that means this separating wound will spread to where Already, this is a clue. I've already given the clue that below it, 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 it goes into uh, the anterior portion of the superior mediastinum. Now, a mediastinum is simply the middle compartment of the thoracic cavity where you can find a lot of organs there and uh, tissues, vessels. You can find a whole lot of them. But for the purpose of our study, now, again, the mediastinum is divided into superior part and an inferior part. And uh, the inferior part is further divided into three. We have the anterior, which is with respect to the pericardium, it is anterior. That means it is in front of the pericardium. Then we have the middle portion or the middle mediastinum, which is actually covers the pericardium. And then we have the posterior mediastinum, the space behind the pericardium. So, I've already explained to you. So, what should be your answer? Definitely, it's not, of course, definitely the answer is what? Anterior mediastinum. It can be posterior because posterior means be, uh, behind. It can be this, it can be that, it can be that. Now, because of time, I cannot explain to you what each and every one means. So, our answer is just thoracic cavity in the anterior mediastinum. Anterior mediastinum. Anterior mediastinum. Okay, second question. Characteristic sign of glycogenosis. Glycogenosis has to do with the metabolism of glycogen. Either you store it or its degradation. Now, glycogen is simply the storage form of glucose in animals. But in plants, we call it starch. We call it starch. So, of course, so there will be enzyme deficient. We can result in all these things. Now, it's muscle pain during physical work. Blood examination usually reveals hypoglycemia. This pathology is caused by the congenital deficiency of the following enzyme. So what do you think? Of course, we can eliminate some obvious ones. We can eliminate, eliminate amylase, which has to do with our digestion. We can eliminate, 
of course amylase amylase you can eliminate you can also eliminate glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase now we'll be left with lysosomal and then glycogen now lysosomal is also another term for bumpers disease bumpers disease but this is not specific now with we'll specifics we'll go for glycogen phosphorylase that's mark adel's disease mark adel's disease which actually has to do with deficiency of this enzyme as a result there is what muscle pain during physical work muscle pain this can be in any tissue can be in the liver everywhere is there is there so our closest answer will go for glycogen phosphorylase so glycogen phosphorylase is your answer glycogen phosphorylase okay Histologic specimen of a kidney demonstrates cells that are closely adjoined to the renal corpuscles in the distal convoluted tubule. Their basal membrane is extremely thin and has no folds. These cells sense the change in, in sodium content. So this is your clue. Sodium content. And influence the renin secretion secretion occurring in the gestal glomerular cells so you see they've told you the function of the gestal glomerular cells what do they do they helps in what secretion of renin so non deep cells so which among these is responsible for changes in sodium content and hence affect or influence the gestal glomerular cells to also produce the renin and utensin system of course it's not messenger cells it's not glomerular, just the glomerular cells. It's not the, of course, your answer should be macula denser. It can be podocyte because podocyte mainly has to do with what? The filtration. It has to do with the filtration. So our answer is macula denser. Macula denser. Okay, next. Bio bacteriological analysis of tap water has resulted in the following total bacteria count in one ml of water is 80. Quality index is three. What will be the conclusion? Now, this they're just trying to determine the purity of water, or how safe a water is. It, uh, how safe a water is to drink. Now, normal water should not have. Now, the total bacteria count in normal water, actually in one liter of water, should not be more than hundred. It shouldn't be more than 100 so if it is more than 100 then that water is very very polluted but if it's below 100 in this case is 80 that means the water is actually safe so let's look for our answer water is extremely polluted no water is safe for consumption yes 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 the process of metabolism in the human body produces active forms of oxygen including superoxide anion this is your clue this anion is inactivated by the following enzyme look at the name superoxide yeah exactly so even if you don't know what the definition mean or these enzymes stand for at least go for something that is related to the question so we'll go for superoxide dismutase superoxide dismutase then what kind of muscle contraction occurs in an upper limb during an attempt to lift a load beyond one strength? Beyond one strength. Over here, there are two things we have to consider. Either it is isotonic or isometric. Now, isotonic, isotonic is the type of contraction whereby there is actually constant tone. That's why we said isotonic. The tone is constant. Though there's movement, but the tone is constant. Example, those who gym will understand it better. Those who lift uh, dumb, uh, yeah, dumbbells up, down, using the hand to lift a dumbbell, you realize that you, when you are gyming the bicep, that way, I mean, you lift it up and you extend it. You lift it and you take it back. That is a form of isotonic contraction. There's actually no change in the tone. The tone is constant, 
but of course there's movement but of course there's movement and even with this it's further divided into two we have the eccentric and then the concentric concentric is during that means you are actually shortening the muscles whilst eccentric is you are, you are lengthening or you are extending the muscles so whilst isometric means there is actually change in the tone but there is no movement <laughs> there is change in tone but there is no movement so in this case when you're lifting a load beyond your strength you're actually doing all that you can but the load is beyond you so you cannot actually lift it so our answer is isometric a patient suffers from high fever apnea pain in the thorax on the right Pyrosynthesis yielded 700 ml of yellow green viscous liquid. Again, yellow green, what does it stand for? It stands for what? Pulse. Pulse. Make the diagnosis. At least you have seen this pulse over there. Now, serous, no, it can be serious because serous is usually turbid. Bronchial pneumonia, no. Plural empyema. Now, the word empyema here stands for purulent it stands for purulent so pura empyema actually is another name for pura empyema is purulent pruritus purulent pruritus so purulent of course pus is not hemorrhagic because there's no blood here neither is it carcinomatosis no so our answer is pura empyema don't confuse empyema with emphysema don't confuse it with it they are two different things a patient suffers from disrupted patency of the airways at the level of a small and medium-sized bronchial tubes what changes of acid base acid base balance can occur in the patient there's what a problem with the small and medium size bronchial tube that means the difficulty in what in breathing now so this has got nothing to do with metabolism so we can easily eliminate metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis and of course with this there will definitely be change in acid base balance hence we can easily eliminate this part acid base balance remains unchanged of course it will be changed now whether it is respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis let us learn it now. Now, with respiratory acidosis, it occurs when there is hypoventilation. Hypoventilation simply means difficulty to breathe. And in hypoventilation, what, occur, what actually occurs is that carbon dioxide is not excreted out, neither is oxygen coming in. So as a result, carbon dioxide gets accumulated more, and hence we have the acidosis. Now, in alkalosis, it occurs in hyperventilation. When, there is, when breathing is so easy, hyperventilation. In this case, that means more carbon dioxide is going out and more oxygen is coming in. And as a result, the, the, the medium becomes more alkaline or the pH becomes more alkaline. And that's why we have the respiratory word, alkalosis. So in this case, when there's difficulty in breathing, that is when there's hypotension, sorry, hypoventilation then our answer is respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis upon toxic damage of hepatic cells resulting in disruption of liver function the patient developed edemas edema what changes of blood plasma are the main cause of edema development now with respect to the option that we have here they are actually talking about the oncotic pressure so oncotic pressure actually has to do with the solute in the blood that is preventing water from leaking. And we are referring to the solute part, we are referring to what? The plasma proteins. proteins. And the highest protein that we have, or in protein, the highest content is albumin. Usually albumin has, in protein, in general, albumin is usually higher than the rest 
is higher than the rest so when there's no albumin of course water cannot be kept in the vascular tissue they will leak out they will leak out that's why we have the edema they will leak out so our answer is Fabino, no globulin no albumin yes but not increase is decrease go and decrease on cutting pressure is decrease so water will leak out water will leak out water will definitely leak out okay a six-year-old child with suspected active tuberculosis tuberculosis process has undergone diagnostic mantox text mantox test now what immunological preparation was injected now when you hear of mantox of course you're referring to a tuberculosis and what substance is actually sensitive here the answer is tuberculin tuberculin is the sensitive substance that will be injected that will be injected the answer is tuberculin 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 okay a 15 year old boy has been diagnosed with acute viral hepatitis this is your disease hepatitis what blood value should be determined to confirm acute infection of hepatic cells now hepatitis is what has to do with, what? with the liver inflammation of the liver caused by virus and uh, one of the biomarkers that we use when there's a liver disease is or are AST and ALT which are the amino transferase activities it could be aspartate or alanine aspartate or alanine transaminase yeah so our answer is amino transferase activity amino transferase activity okay a 53 year old man is diagnosed with pangens disease this has to do to a disease of the bone. Take note. Concentration concentration of oxyproline in daily urine is sharply increased. Oxyproline. Take note. These are all proteins. Which primary means intensify this integration of? Now, when you look at the option that we have here relating to this pangen disease of course a bone majority of part of the bone is made up of what of collagen fibers and uh, another clue that gave us that will make us know that it's collagen fibers is the fact that it's what oxyproline because oxyproline is involved in the production or the synthesis of collagen fibers yeah it's involved in it so in the in the extracellular metric so with bone being there's a deficiency in bone or whatever it is or disease of the bone mainly it has to do with what collagen fiber so your answer is collagen. collagen when taking exams students often have dry mouth okay dry mouth dry mouth the mechanism that causes this state result from the following reflexes now taking an exams means you are aware you're going to take an exam tomorrow or you'll be aware if you're going to take an exam tomorrow am i right exactly so you are conscious so definitely it is what condition your mind is conditioned you're going to write an exam so of course we can rule out these three we rule them out so we'll leave it parasympathetic or sympathetic now dryness of mouth is caused by sympathetic nervous system so our answer here is conditioned sympathetic conditioned sympathetic okay a patient was a patient has hornets of voice during laryngoscopy a gray white larynx tumor with papillary surface this is your clue has been detected microscopic investigation has shown the following growth of connective tissue covered with multilayer strongly keratinized pavement epithelium no cellular atypia what is the most likely diagnosis all these things are just there to confuse you now papillary is your clue so what do we do papilloma as simple as that papilloma so your answer is papilloma, papilloma. 
Okay. During autopsy, approximately two liters of pus has been have been found in the abdominal cavity of the body. Peritone, peritoneum is dull and, and of grayish shade. Serous tunic of intestine has grayish color coating that is easily removable. Now don't forget there's pus here. So it's giving you a clue. And again, we have grayish colored coat. Colored coating. This has to do with what? Fibrins. Fibrins. Now specify the most likely type of peritonitis in the patient. Of course, combine the two. Pus and fibrin. So we have what? Fibrinopurulent peritonitis. It can be serous. It can be hemorrhagic. No. Neither can it be tuberculosis. Peritonitis. Our answer here is Fabino prolent peritonitis. Autopsy of a body revealed bone marrow hyperplasia of tubular and flat bones. This is a clue. Pyoid marrow. Pyoid. Pyoid. Spinomegaly and hepatomegaly. Enlargement of all lymph node groups. What disease are the identified groups of typical changes typical of now, if pyoid bone is usually typical for chronic myelogenous leukemia. Chronic myelogenous leukemia. So your answer is that.